Now, various terms describe movements of the limbs and other parts of the body. Most movements are defined in relation to the anatomical position and occur at joints where two or more bones articulate with one another. This could be flexion, extension, adduction, abduction, circumduction, medial or internal rotation, or lateral or external rotation. When we talk about the various movements of the body, it's helpful to consider movements in antagonistic or opposing pairs. So flexion indicates bending or decreasing the angle between the bones or parts of the body. We saw that flexing the trunk could mean flexing at the vertebral column forward. Flexing at the elbow would bring the forearm to the shoulder while flexing your fingers would make the movement towards clenching your fist. The thigh can flex forward towards the torso with a straight leg to the chest or the leg can flex the knee and bring the heel to the glutes. Extension indicates straightening or increasing the angle between the bones or parts of the body. Extension usually occurs in posterior directions. So an example of this would be in your trunk would be back extension, or if you're into yoga, it would be cobra pose. It can also be your arms when you extend your elbows, like the tricep extension exercise, or your hands when you're opening a clenched fist. A straight leg extends back behind the body and leg extends at the knee from a bent knee position to a straight knee position. Now let's look closer at the fingers and the wrist. When the dorsum of the hand moves towards the posterior forearm, that is wrist extension. When the palm moves towards the anterior forearm, that is called wrist flexion. As I mentioned before, when the fingers are flexed, they move towards making a fist and when they're extended, the hand is completely open. The thumb also performs opposition and reposition. These are easy to remember because opposition is when your thumb lies opposite another finger on the same hand. When it returns back to the anatomical position, it's called reposition. The little finger is the only other digit that's able to oppose. Finally, the forearm and hand can be supinated or pronated. So an easy way to remember this is supination. Supination is to turn your forearm with your palm up as if you're holding a bowl of soup. Pornation or pronation is to turn your forearm with the palm down as if you're pouring out whatever is in the bowl. Now let's look at the foot. The foot's plantar surface is on the sole of the foot and its dorsal surface is on the top or instep of the foot. This makes sense when you think about the dorsal fin in the back or top side of a dolphin and when people get plantar warts on the bottom of their feet. When you pull the dorsal surface of the foot towards the knee, it's appropriately named dorsiflexion. And when you point your toe to the floor, that's called plantar flexion. Abduction and adduction are relatively easy concepts to remember as well. If you think about bringing the upper or lower limbs towards the body, you're adding it to the body by bringing it closer. That's called adduction. Then the opposite direction, moving it away from the body is called abduction. Most people simply capitalized AD in adduction and AB in abduction when writing, or they say adduction or abduction. Now let's look again at the digits and go through these other movements. If you abduct your third digit, which is in the median line of the hand, it goes towards the pinky finger and that's called medial abduction because it's moving away from the midline of the hand and going medially towards the body. When you abduct the same digit towards the thumb in anatomical position, remember the thumb is on the lateral side of the body, that's called lateral abduction. Now, when you're looking at the second, fourth, and fifth digits, it's all relative to the median line of the hand. So for example, if your ring finger is moving away from the median line, then that's abduction. And when coming towards the median line, that's called adduction. Same thing for your index finger. If it's coming towards the middle finger, then that's adduction. And it's going away from the middle finger, that's called abduction. Now the thumb is a little bit different. So for thumb abduction and adduction, the thumb moves perpendicular to the palm. When the thumb is adducted, it's coming back towards the palm shown here while abduction brings it away from the palm. The thumb comes across and parallel to the palm for flexion and away, but still parallel to the palm for extension as seen here. Now let's look at the upper limb first to explain lateral and medial rotation. In the anatomical position, the thumb is out to the side, which means it's on the lateral side of the body. When that straight arm turns in so that the thumb rotates to the medial side of the body, that would be medial rotation at the shoulder joint. When it returns back to the anatomical position and rotates out, that's called lateral rotation. Now the same thing happens with a straight lower limb. When the foot rotates in towards the midline, that's medial rotation at the hip joint. And when it rotates out, that's called lateral rotation. 
Now, physicians will often use the terms external and internal rotation to describe these movements. Now, let's look at just a couple of other movements. When you elevate your shoulders, you're bringing your shoulders up to your ears in a shrug type movement. When you return them to the resting position or even lower your shoulders further, then you're depressing them. You can also perform retraction of your shoulder blades, which is when you pull your shoulder blades back together and you can perform protraction when you roll your shoulders forward. Now, protracted shoulders are something you would see on somebody with bad or slouched forward posture. Now, foot can invert so that soles face to the median plane. They can also evert so the soles face away from the median plane.